I would like to welcome you to the College of Engineering and Computer Science 2024 convocation. And when you come to our convocation, you get to see great people, you get a nice lunch, and you get some nice promotion items. And this umbrella will help you in the rain and also in the sun, so it's uh, <laughs> multi-purpose. So make sure to get your umbrella. Yes. Again, I'm gonna do some quick introductions. We have so many people here, so I may not mention names. I'm gonna recognize people as I go forward, but I'm gonna recognize a few people you know, in groups, and please hold your upload until I finish the recognition. So I want first to uh, thank our college leadership team. We have many partners from across the university. We have Ms. Samantha Allen from the president's office. We have from research, you know, Dr. Sagan, Dr. Spencer from the provost's office, Dr. Savidra from advancement. Luis from uh, student success, we have Kamara Jackson, we have from enrollment management, uh, Dara and Griselda, we have from governmental relation, uh, Christian, we have, so may I ask the university leadership who are here, could you please stand and give him a big round of applause because they've been very supportive of our college, yes. We have a college council under the leadership of Dr. Bornick. We have members from the faculty senate, the Women Faculty Network, Dr. Orozco, she is the president of the Women Faculty Network. She is from our college and members from the staff senate. So could you please stand if you represent any of these groups so that we can recognize you. Thank you. Yes. We have many student leaders in this room. You're gonna hear from our student leaders soon. But also we have the SGA, I know Odalis, the, and the, the, the president of SGA. I know she is not an engineering student, but she told me her sister is coming to engineering, right? So I'm looking forward to having her sent. So please, if you are one of our student leaders, the college, the SGA, the student senators, the, the, the engineering advisory student group, could you please stand? Give our leaders, they are our future. Give them a big round of applause. And we have great community partners here. We have many alums and many partners, part of our external advisory group, part of our community partners. So I see many of them here. So if you are one of our community partners or alums, could you please stand and be, I see Amos from the Alumni Association, Heriberto, you know, uh, Juan. Could you please stand, Dora, Jessica? Yeah, could you please stand? Give them a big round of applause. Every year I give my leadership team a book about leadership, and I cannot believe it. This is the seventh book. It was not like, I've not been seven years as a dean, but the first year I was so excited I gave them two books, but then after that I say, one book is enough. This year, the book we discussed is about coaching, the coaching habit, you know, and our role as coaches, coaches for our students, coaches for our junior faculty, coaches for our colleagues, helping them, you know, grow and reach their fullest potential. So if you need a copy, I have many copies in my office. If you need a copy, I'll give you a copy of that one. So you get an umbrella and a nice book. You cannot get better than that, right, Samantha? Okay. No other college are offering these promotions, okay? So, that's why we have so many students, by the way. Anyway, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. I want to start by, as I mentioned, we have an engineering student advisory group, and this group decided instead of having one chair, they have five chairs representing the various disciplines. And they have a message for you from our student leaders. Let's roll this message. We are excited to reconnect with our colleagues and faculty. We're happy to be back and engage with our student organization. We are excited for the new programs and initiatives in our college. We're looking forward to another great and productive academic year. We're looking forward to working with everyone and being successful together. To our faculty and staff, thank you for supporting our success. Thank you for your mentorship and guidance. Thank you for the opportunities you bring for us and the positive impact in our lives. Thank you for caring and treating us like family. Thank you for always going above and beyond for us. Thanks, and visa. Give them a big round of applause.
New Year bring new students, and I know Dara Newton and Griselda work with this. I'm happy to report that we have the largest freshman class ever, 1,128 students. It sounds exciting, but we are having challenges finding classes and space for them. But it's a good problem to have because I talk with other deans and tell me they are having problems finding students. Um, I don't have that problem, I tell you that. And you see, since 2018, Samantha, make sure to tell that to Dr. Bailey because I'm gonna send a request for more faculty and things, and I see you taking pictures, so. I know the president is not here, but I know Samantha gonna go and talk with him after the meeting. 75% growth since the last five years. 75% growth. Now, one of the things we know, and our colleagues in student success know, getting the students, is great, but the more important thing is to retain them and get them to graduate. So we focus on the first year experience, engaging students. We have many initiatives. We are the only college who do boot camps. The freshman class, we bring them one week before, we do boot camps for them. We work on ad with advising, we work with career development. I know Kamara Jackson is here. We try to engage as many, as, as many, of them with undergraduate research, with professional organization, because I know the students who are engaged in these activities get retained, and we made some curriculum changes, because we know not all the students go to the activity, so what we do, we make changes in the classrooms. Look into this growth. By the way, over 5,000 students in this college. Can you believe it? 5,000 prospective engineers. And by the way, we started engineering in the 90s, the students here didn't have a chance to get an engineering, now over 5,000. So when I talk with donors, when I talk with people, I tell them, think about that. If we don't have a college of engineering here, how many of those 5,000 students, maybe 10% of them, 15%. So this is tremendous. And if you think about, I know the university have grown 34,000, so we represent 15% of the university students. So if you walk across our campus, you know, engineers are good in math, one in each seven students is an engineer. You cannot find that in any other university. And um, Dr. Bailey knows this very well, by the way. We are the fastest growing college at UTRGB. No question about that. The growth, we look over 50% growth over the last five years. This is another thing I'm excited about. Look at the percent females we have. 20% females in engineering, actually, Last semester, I had the president of the Society of Women Engineers. When I told her, we have 1,000 female engineering students, she was astonished. And by the way, 20% Latina. You know what's the representation of Latinas in engineering? 1%, we have 20%. So this is amazing. Now, people tell me, how do you get all these students? I tell them it's easy. We bring over 20,000 kids to our campus during the year. You know, all these programs, railway safety with Dr. Tarawne, Energy and You with Dr. Karen, you know, the regional science fair, all these programs. When you engage with 20,000 K through 12 kids, you can get over 1,000 students. So, you know, this is the secret. I don't tell it to all other deans, but you can know this, right? And we are proud of our partnerships. We started with Harlingen, the early, I don't know if Michael Aldab is here or not. He has been very helpful in that regard. We started, these collegiate high have a track in engineering and computer science. So we started with Harlingen in 21. This fall we have two, one Edinburgh, one in McAllen, and those also are providing the pipelines for us. I'm really proud of the partnerships with our local professional organizations. American Society of Civil Engineers, Texas Society of Professional Engineers, the Engineering Alumni Association. Let me I tell you why I love these groups and many of them here. Number one, they provide opportunities to our students, internships, mentoring, but also they provide scholarships. Look at me, they do fundraising and give scholarships to our students. So, so can we give those groups a big round of applause? I 
I know we have some people from McAllen, and I know Mike Willis from the South Texas Manufacturing Association, and others. We also support regional economic and workforce development. We work with Costed, McAllen, Economic Development Corporation. Our TMAC is here. I know David Ortiz. We support over 50 industries, providing them support for recruitment, for expansion of their operation. The Office of Research is a key part under Dr. Sagan, Workforce and Economic Development. Uh, eBridge, I know Linda Offland should be here somewhere, you know. So this is a key part of what we want to do. We want to support the regional economic development and workforce development. This is the most part I'm excited about, by the way. You know, we've heard Dr. Bailey saying, our success is measured by the success of our students, and our students have been successful. Not locally, not in the state of Texas, nationally. So I'm gonna just recognize these groups, and I'm gonna hold until I finish all of them. These are students winning national awards, by the way. Those are national champions. The first one you see is the Green Power. This is the car, by the way. Designed by our students, you can take a ride with it after the convocation, you know. But make sure to bring it back, okay? So, first place, first place in the nation. This was a competition, Green Power USA. The rocket launcher, also first place, Team Spirit Award. You see their rocket there, don't worry, it's not gonna fly, okay? So, first place, you know, the NASA Mines, first and third place. So I love it, they didn't only take the first place, I told them, why did you leave the second? I told them, next year you take the first, second, and third, don't leave anything for, for other. The IEEE in Brownsville, first place. Can I ask all the students who are part of these, I ask them to come, because to please stand and give them a big, big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, I'm so proud of you. Because they represent the Valley, they represent UTRGV, they represent us the best representation. And it's not enough. Look there, there is a number of students who win first place, American Society of Civil Engineers. There is a number of students working with Dr. T first, second, third place in poster competitions. There is one of our students who got the best master thesis, you know, at one of the national conferences. May I ask those students to stand, give them another big round of applause. Thank you. This is another thing that Samantha knows. Our students, they are not only getting engineering awards. Think about that. The President's Holiday Card, usually those awards go to the fine arts. We're, uh, folks, we're not leaving any awards for any. One of our engineering students, Maritza, got this award, and we have a number of students. Look, six students, so I know Patrick, I don't know. When they want to highlight profiles of excellence, they know where which college to come. They come to our college. Can we give those students a big round of applause? People don't know that, by the way. I'm proud of our students' athletes. It's hard to, have, to be an engineering student and athlete. Can you believe it? We have 38 student athletes doing great on the court and in the classroom. I'm so proud of them. One of them is Indy, is Indy here. I want to highlight Indy, and Indy is one of them. She's a, a civil engineering student. She is almost 4.0, think about it, an athlete, an engineering student. She is the president of the Engineering Honor Society. You have to be very high GPA, you know. She was actually the only female representative at the WAC, you know, Western Athlete, representing 11 universities. She was the first one from UTRGV to go to Division I NCAA leadership. That's a student in our college. Indy, I'm so proud of you. Where is Indy? Which one? She's playing, she's representing us, Indy. She told me she'll be here, but uh, I can understand, okay? Now, another measure of our success is the engagement of research. We have more students than ever engaging in research, because we know if they engage in research, they're gonna graduate faster and things. And I want to thank all the faculty for engaging them. We have students engage in professional, by the way, all these are professional organizations in our college, you name it. All the professionals, we start to give them in these professionals, develop their not only technical skills, but soft skills. We support them going to professional organizations. I know I invite some donors. I know Rolando Layal is here with the Ramon family. They give us some good funding. We use that funding to send the students to go to these conferences. By the way, they go to these and I take several hundred students. It's a life-changing experience for them. 
They give the mentoring, they give the coaching, they come back with jobs, with internships, they develop their soft skills. So I'm really proud of their participation. And this is something that Kamara, where is Kamara? Kamara, another is our career development, because I tell the students, you come to college, your family send you to college to get a job, not just to get a degree. Degree is good. But one success, you see, this is the data from the career service. Guess which college is number one college in participating in career fairs? Kamara, which college? College of Engineering, yes. And as a result of that, we have internships. Students like never doing internships. You see, this is the places we know of. Across the US, our students doing internship. And guess what? When they do internship, most of them, they get an offer. They come back, they say, Dr. Kubaj, I did an internship, they gave me an offer. They say, I told him, I love it. I wish nobody did that for me, even if I, after I finish PhD. So they are doing great. As I mentioned, Los Alamos, you know, we have a partnership with them. I'll talk about that. We never had Los Alamos. Uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, I know Dr. Lee is here. He told me we have, and Dr. Sagan has been critical in building that. Over 30,000 students in Oak Ridge in the summer. We've never had students from the valley in Oak Ridge. So this is amazing. Now, and we have students who are doing internship locally in the valley. Many of you know Nobel Builders, right? Nobel Builders, they take about 20 interns every year, not from UTRGV, from UTRGV, University of Houston, Texas. So this year, Rene Capistrian, he is the CEO of Nobel Builders. He invited me to come and attend the graduation of their interns. You know, and basically we had a number of interns there. And he told me, I want to tell you about one of your interns. And I'm gonna mention that intern. He told me when the students come to Nobel Builders, they have three divisions. They rotate the students across, so it's 10 weeks, three weeks in this area, three weeks in this area. And he says the students started in one area, the division head called the CEO, told him, I have one student, I want to keep her. I don't want to send her to the next division. <laughs> the CEO told him, no, we need the students to see it. I cannot do that, I'm sorry. So they moved to the second division. The division head called the CEO, can I keep this student? Which student? The same student. So, no, we cannot do that because it's good for the students to see the whole operation. Why should we just keep them in one? Then the student moved to the third division. And the head of the third division called Rene Capistrian. He told him, Mr. Capistrian, I, I have a request for you. Can I keep this student in my division? Rene told me, I wanted to meet that student. And that student is Claudia Gonzalez. He gave her the C open. Claudia, you are here. Where is Claudia? I think give her an applause. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. But I tell the students, when you do great things, you represent university. Now, this is the best part of this, by the way. I want you to hear to this one. That's the most part I like. After we did the ceremony, he told me, the CEO, I have a little surprise for you, Dean Kubaj. I told him, you did a good job. You hired our, and by the way, Claudia, she has a, an offer. When she finished, she go there. I told him, I appreciate you. You know, you hired our students. You do. He says, no, no, no. Look into the first picture. He gave me a check, $25,000. He told me, you are the, the college and the university, do, I want to invest in our students. So he gave us $25,000 because they say, this is the type of students we want. So I tell the students, when you do great job, by the way, you help all of us. You help your colleagues, you help all of it. Any other uh, interns from Nobel Builders? I see some of them here. Any other interns who, yes, give them a round of applause. I know we have others, okay. Another thing I'm excited about, people think that engineers are not good leaders. We are trying to develop not only engineers, but leaders in engineering. We have our student advisory council. We have participation in SGA. By the way, the outstanding senator of the year from SGA is Jose Tabriz from our college. In Ingridi, I mentioned her a little bit ago. She is the influencer of the year. She is the first UTRGB, so our students are are leaders. Now, look into this one. They are not leaders, national leadership. National AAC ambassador, American Society of Civil Engineers. She's helping other students. Katrina Exquivel from Civil Engineering. Look at Kofi. Kofi is a computer science student. By the way, he did an Archer Fellow. Usually that fellow goes for 
politics and things. He was in DC because they need engineering, the government needs engineering, there's lots of data, you know, AI, all these things, you know. And Jose also, he is the Region 5 SHIP Vice President. If any of those students here, can we give them a big round of applause? Now, I tell people we want to prepare not only engineers, we want to prepare leaders, because engineering skills is good, but we want the soft skills. So we are the only college in the university, probably in Texas, who have developed an engineering student leadership academy, thanks to the National Science Foundation, to help the students develop their leadership skills. So I'm gonna roll this video of the students who participated this year academy. I attended the Leadership Academy. It was one of the best events here in UTRGV, and I hope that other people have the opportunity to attend, just like I did. I learned a lot about my emotional intelligence and the habits of highly effective people, and I can't wait to implement these into my roles as an organizational leader and in the future as a professional engineer. This leadership program was very good. It allowed me to work with other engineers, and I hope to, with the skills that I learned here, I could take it beyond my career here at UTRGV and into my professional career as an engineer. I attended the Engineering Student Leadership Academy where I learned a lot about leadership skills, um, emotional intelligence, and mainly how to become a better student leader. Through this academy, I gained qualities and characteristics of a great leader that I can apply to my future career. My biggest takeaway from this academy was learning to be proactive and meeting new people and like get my relationships with my friends were better. I am grateful for the opportunities that were presented to me within this Leadership Academy, the skills that I developed, and the people that I met. My biggest takeaway was learning about Dr. Daniel and all his experience, also meeting new people from the Department of Engineering. In that academy, I was able to uh, develop my skills as a leader. Uh, I got back my emotional intelligence results and it was a very positive experience working with other students across different majors around the college. I attended the Leadership Academy. We went over a lot of important topics, especially the seven habits of highly effective people. I'm hoping hopefully next year people, more people can join and get a bigger group to learn. This Leadership Academy that I was able to attend uh, it allowed me to be aware of my bad habits um, and just become an overall better leader. Um, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity. Visa. Imagine our students were doing great without getting the leadership. So imagine what the future is going to be for them. Give them a big round of applause. Now, this is very exciting. The Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the largest professional organization for Hispanics, over 10,000. Last year, they created the inaugural academic institution of the year. They want to recognize an institution not only for preparing Hispanics, to be engineers, but leaders in engineering. And you could know which institution received this award. Give yourself a big round of applause. You received this award. Now, the reason our students are successful and what drives their success is the success of our faculty. And by the way, I'm gonna do these recognitions in group because if I do it individually, you won't leave here on the time. So I want to recognize the faculty, their success is drawn. I want to recognize here three, four faculty. You know Dr. Lozano. Dr. Lozano, I'm having a hard time tracking the number of awards, you know. Temis Award, Rice Outstanding Awards, Legendary Women Award, American Chemical Society Award. Imagine, just one of our faculty getting four awards. You see, this is Stanford. This is not by Dr. Sagan office, by the way. The, it says Stanford University. World's top 2% of scientists. We have three of them here, by the way. Nobody knows that, in the Rio Grande Valley. And guess which college they are? In the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Dr. Lozano, Dr. Khan, Dr. Dang, Dr. Caronto. And we have one of our junior faculty who has been appointed to the American Society of Civil Engineers Board. May I ask those amazing faculty to stand? Give them a big round of applause, yes. This is something Dr. Savidra's office does. They do the Faculty Excellence Awards. I created those awards like 15 years ago. They give 10 university awards. 10 University Awards, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it. 
Guess how many awards of those things came to the College of Engineering and Computer? You know, four, 40% of the university award. By the way, we have 10% of the university faculty. We get 40% of the award. That tells you how much work is done. So I want to recognize Dr. Fuentes, Dr. Vargas, Dr. Elizar, and Dr. Constantin. Could you please stand? Give them a big round of applause. This is not enough. By the way, there is, the university gives the University Team Excellence Award for the second year in a row. Last year, it was the Energy and You. This year, it was the Expo under the leadership of Dr. Lee. You know, and also, this is something you, know, you wouldn't think about. We received 15 Communicator Award. Communicator from the Academy of Arts, Creative, and this is for excellence in communication and videos. All the videos we put on social media, those received national awards, and Jorge Vidal has been creative in doing business. May I recook, can, can we ask those part of these to give them a big round? Yes. By the way, we say that's not enough. We need our own excellence awards. So we did our own college excellence awards and we recognized 10 more faculty. We have too many achievements. University is not, the university award is not enough to recognize them. Look into, we want to announce our college excellence awards. This award is a profound honor validating years of dedication and hard work in my field. It reflects not only personal achievement, but also the invaluable support of mentors, colleagues, and loved ones. This recognition inspires me to continue pushing boundaries and contributing meaningfully to my profession. This recognition reflects the collective efforts of my colleagues, students, and the entire mechanical engineering department. And I am looking forward to continuing sharing my journey with such an exceptional group of people. I'm proud to be a part of a college team that works together and collaborates to ensure the success of our students. This is why we are successful together. I take great pride in our college being AVID certified, which is essential to prepare our graduates to enter critical STEM fields in the global workforce. Empowering engineers with sustainability education is key to designing a future where innovation and environmental responsibility go hand in hand. I joined the college because I love teaching. We have the best students and I'm excited to see our efforts being recognized. I'm deeply grateful to have the opportunity to innovate in online education and to impact student learning experiences in such a meaningful way. I'm grateful for the support and the recognition the college provides for research. We are certainly on the path to becoming an R1 institution. I'm very happy and honored to receive this award, especially given the outstanding faculty in the college. This is the start of my third year at UTRGV, and I'm looking forward to many more to come. Thank you. Mentoring students at UTRGV and watching their growth from K through 12 all the way to masters and also PhD has been the most fulfilling part of my career. Thank you. Teaching is at the core of our university's mission. I'm happy that our college recognizes the excellence of our educators and the role in shaping the life of our students. Community outreach is extremely important as it fosters the next generations of scientists and engineers. I am very proud and humble to be part of this absolutely outstanding program. It is my privilege and pleasure to be of service to our students and faculty. The success of our students makes our community and the world a better place. It is an honor to be a small part of their journey. Visa. Can I ask those outstanding faculty and staff to stand? Please stand, give them a big round of applause, yes. Thank you. This is the part that Dr. Sagan and uh, Dr. Thompson are gonna love the most. You know, you look into our college, the increase in grants is, it went actually like five years ago from two million to 14 million, I don't know how many percent is that. Multiple times, we are getting 18% of the university awards. And I want to, can we move to the next slide? Yes. And I want to thank, by the way, we can have another recognition event giving those excellence award and recognizing. I want to recognize, we have faculty receiving over 1 million, over, you could see their name there. I don't want to, because we're gonna recognize them at another event. We're gonna work with Dr. Sagan and I make sure he pays for that lunch, not me, because those people are working to help his division. 
and you know, 100,000, more than 100,000. So in my view, any amount is important for us because this goes to support our students expanding opportunities for them. And I'm not, by the way, this is only just the PI. There is, you know, another 10, 15 faculty. So may I ask the faculty who have received grants over the last year as BIs or QBIs, could you please stand? <laughs> Even if your name is not there. I know, I didn't list the QBIs. Please stand. BIs and QBIs. Yes, stand. yes. Yes, thank you. And eventually, Dr. Sagan and Thomas know when you write a grant, it takes time to get. By the way, there are much more people writing grants. Think into, I'm using his pulse data and all the things. Look, 117 you know, proposals submitted from our college. And, and by the way, there is one thing important. We have 74, we need more faculty. You have to tell Dr. Bailey, Samantha. <laughs> Can you imagine all this work done by 74 tenure, tenure track faculty? This is in the data, not my data. This is the research office data. 66 out of those 74 have submitted proposal. 90% of our faculty. So I want to thank all of you for that. I want to thank the centers. And we're gonna have more things coming because actually this afternoon, Dr. Sagan gonna approve a new center. There is a new center for aerospace research. You know SpaceX. All the students come and they tell me, like, we want to work in SpaceX. Can we do any research? He has many students, you know. He received 2.25 million from Air Force and another 2.25 millions are coming. So I want to recognize Dr. Chautabali and his team. Is Dr. Chautabali here? I think he might be in the center doing some research. Okay, we'll, recognize, we'll wait for that one. Okay, let's do it. Now, this is another initiative. I know Dr. Farias was there. We are establishing a new center, a new work with Los Alamos, Homeland Security and Engineering Partnership. You know, I wanted to think, this is, we are one of a, is Dr. Moya here? Dr. Moya is there, yeah, we recognize him in a little bit, yeah. So one out of eight, eight university in the nation have this partnership. We have students doing internship, and by the way, initially they gave us and Dr. Moya 1.5, when they came they said we'll give you another half a million and we're willing to extend that. So may I recognize Dr. Moya, his team, Dr. Chautabali and his team. Give them a big round of applause. This is the most thing I'm excited about for this year. You know, we started engineering in the 90s. We have been doing undergraduate degrees. Our students didn't have a chance to do a PhD in engineering. They have to go to Austin, to San Antonio. So starting last year, we started our first PhD program in the college. First PhD of engineering in the Rio Grande Valley. By the way, nobody is offering a PhD in engineering in the Rio Grande Valley. There are people offering undergraduate degree, but not a PhD. And by the way, when we went to the coordinating board, we expected 10 students the first year. We had 10 students the first year, 11. We have 29 students in that PhD. Now, what is the percent female? Over half of them women, Latinas. I told you, the percent of women in engineering 15, this is undergraduate. PhDs is like five, six percent. Latinas is less than 0.1 percent. So this is amazing, and I would like to, and you see the picture with those students, I'll recognize the students in a little bit, and Dr. Lozano, who has been key after I do the other bit, just for the sake of time. Now, this was a year ago. This year, we say it's not enough. We started another PhD, the PhD in computer science with interdisciplinary application. Again, Dr. Tumai has been the lead. We told the coordinating board, we're gonna have 10 students. How many students we have? 23 students, 26% female. So I wanted to think about that. Last year, like this time, we didn't have PhD students. This year, 52 PhD students, 40% of them, they never had the opportunity. Those students before, they had to go to San Antonio to Dallas. Now, they are able to get their PhD here, right here in the Rio Grande Valley. So I can ask all the students who are part of the PhD program, Dr. Lozano, Dr. Tumai, the faculty, could you please stand and give them a big round of because this is historic for our college. Yes. Thank you. You see them in, in the orange shirts there, the, the materials. Yes, and I, I got Dr. Sagan excited because I, I, he gonna reveal the move and I told him we're gonna start graduating some of those students Dr. Lozano told me as 
in the coming year or two. We're gonna see some graduate because some of them started earlier. So very soon, we're gonna see some of those. I'm not gonna give the dates, but you're gonna be happy to hear this information. We have some faculty promotion. Can we recognize those faculty? I see Dr. Ayati here and the lecturers, Dr. Orozco. If you are one of those faculty, can you please stand? Let's give them a round of applause. Okay. We are growing and we are welcoming new faculty and new staff. May I ask those new faculty and staff to please stand? Let's give them a big round of applause. If you are, I don't want to go through the names, but you know yourself, right? By the way, with hiring those faculty and staff, we're gonna have 39 staff. We're gonna have, with these faculty, 123 faculty members. How many faculty the university have? One, two, one, this is everybody, all the faculty. We have a little over 1,200. So we have 10% of the university faculty. Samantha, this is for you, okay? Take a picture of the last slide, okay? <laughs> Not now, I'll tell you when to take the picture, okay? So, <laughs> yes, 10% of the university faculty. We've seen before, we are the fastest growing college in the university. No question about that, right? Dara, she gave, she gave us the seal, right? So, so we are the fastest growing college, but I want you, we have 10% of our university faculty, 90% of our tenure track faculty submitting proposals. I mentioned the 5,000 out of 34,000. We are teaching 15% of the university students. We are generating 18% of the university research expenditure, and we are receiving 40% of the UTRGV award. Guess what, the new faculty and all of you, we are also the most productive college. Congratulations, yes. <laughs> now, the convocation is, is an opportunity to look, but also we need to look to the future. So a few things briefly, again, we discussed this through the retreat, some things for next year. You know, uh, there is growing pains, we know that. When the family grow, we need to work on adding faculty, adding staff, adding space. I know we work with Dr. Sagan, with the provost, on these things, managing not only the growth in students, growth in research, growth in grants, because when you have more grants, guess what? I have some department with one staff, and you need more staff support, more new programs, so this is something Thing we need. We need to continue the culture of family. I'm really proud. You're gonna see families in our events. And we are the most engaged college. Engagement with the students, with other partners. You, look how many people coming from the university. With the community, that's important for us. Student success, retention, graduation, putting them on the path for either a job or graduate program, expanding educational opportunity. Our goal is that each student, undergraduate students, before they graduate, they should have either an undergraduate research experience or an internship experience. Increase research, I know. Dr. Sagan is gonna make some announcements soon. We need to increase research in line of the university priorities, but also to align with our PhD programs. And we've been doing some strategic hires. And as I mentioned, we are an engaged college and Christian from the community. We need to continue engaging with K through 12 with economic development because that's what makes our college different is the engagement we, we do. This is the, these are the best parts of today. So don't. <laughs> We're doing good in time. We'll finish in 10, 15 minutes. So please hang there. This is the most exciting part, okay? We talk about the extraordinary successes of our students, right? We talk about the successes of our faculty and staff. Because without our faculty and staff, the students won't be successful. But I always like to recognize the families of our students. Without the families, the fathers, the mothers, the grandmothers, our students won't be successful. Every year I recognize a family because this is the familia culture. This is what, we've, what we like to. And today I want to recognize a family. The Capitinacci family. The Capitinacci family, they are living in Reynosa. The father, Jesus, and the mother, Dulce. You could see them in the left picture. And in the right, you see they had four kids. 
The four kids is Dana, actually Jesus is the older one, then Dulce the second, then Dana is the third one. And you know, like many of you here, they wanted their children, and by the way, the father and mothers are engineers, chemical engineers. They are working in Reynosa, in those companies in Reynosa. But they wanted to give their children a better future and a better opportunity than they had. So they sent them to the US, they sent them to this side of the border. So Jesus, joined our college in 2008. Dulce followed him, and he set the stage for his younger sisters. Jesus is the oldest, then Dulce in 2013, and then Dana in 2018. And those, by the way, they were not regular students. They were leaders. Jesus was the president of the mini Baja car. By the way, that one is a different car. This is the electric car, that one is a regular car, and we win those competitions. D Dulce was the president of SWE. She was working with Dr. Lozano. Remember Dr. Lozano? She used to work with her. And Dana, she was the president of the Society of Automotive, and she's still working with Dr. T on the UTCRS. So they were not, they came here, but they were student leaders. Good news, they all graduated, and graduated on time. Jesus graduated in 2013. This is by the time the sister came in. Dulce graduated in 2017, and Dana graduated in 2022. Three children, all graduating from the College of Engineering and Computer Science. You know, this is the familiar culture. So the father and the mother, Jesus and Dulce, they attended 2013, the graduation of, of Jesus. They attended in 2017, the graduation of Dulce, but the dad passed away. He passed away in 2018, and he could not attend the graduation of his youngest daughter, Dana. Not only that, the mom continued the mission. She didn't give up. She wanted her children, because remember, the father and the mother, they are engineers with bachelor's degrees. She sent the kids back to school, so Jesus came back and he did a master's degree. He graduated in 2016. This is an inspiring story. If this story doesn't inspire you, it's, it's an amazing story. <laughs> no, go, go back. Go back, yeah, yes. And he's working now an engineering manager at Commons. Commons, one of the major engineering companies. Dulce, as I mentioned, finished, she came back and she did his, her master's in 2017. She's now working a senior engineer at Dow. And Dana, she is graduating this semester with her master's degree. She's working with Dr. T in the UTC RS. Not only that, by the way, the, the, the story is getting better, okay? Okay. During here, they met their significant others. Jesus, he got married to Luisa. She is one of our graduates. Bachelor's in master's degree, and she's working in Toyota. Dulce, she met with David, who's our graduate in 2017, is working in Dow, and they had Sophia. And Dana, she, you know, she met Andres, he's one of our graduates, and they just had Jesus, who's one month old. So this family of three engineers of ours become six engineers of ours. And I have Dana here, I want to recognize Dana and, and Andreas. Could you please stand? Give them, they are here. Yes. Yes. And by the way, the one month old here is, is here. I have some gift for him. And I'm counting on him as a future engineer because the father, the mother, the grandmother, so I have him. This is, I'm counting him in the enrollment of 20. What will be his class? 20, 40. Anyway, you tell me that, 2045, right? <laughs> yes. So this is all a great story, and I want to recognize them and give them something. Now, by the way, today I'm not here to recognize Dana or Dulce or Jesus, because they got the recognition, by the way. They get the recognition. They got their first degree, they got their second, they were recognized. I'm here to recognize the one who drove their success. The one who sacrificed to make sure they have a better life than their own. The one who has been the backbone of this family. The one without her, none of those kids to be successful. 
She left her kids, she was living in Renosa. She sent them to this side of the border. She wanted them to be successful. She became a widow, she didn't give up. She keep working and supporting her children to get an undergraduate degree, a master's degree. And by the way, Dana, I'm counting her in the PhD program when she, after she graduates. So we recruited one student for you, Dr. Sagan. <laughs> right? So that person is the one I want to recognize today. So today, I want to recognize the mom. I want to recognize mom Dolce. Mom, could you please come here? Please give her a standing innovation. I want you to give this mom a standing innovation, yes. Thank you. And we had gifts, by the way, for the whole family, you know, t-shirts and things. So this way they can promote uh, our college. Felicidades, okay? And also we have some gifts for Dana. Yes, yes, we have some gifts for Dana. And by the way, I just want to, I have some gifts for Jesus, the little baby. You want to bring him with you, the baby? Bring him, bring him. Yes, I have something for him. He's a, Jesus is one month old, by the way. This is for Jesus, by the way. Look, Samantha, into this. This is for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> this is for Jesus. So Dana, you know, Dara, we are recruiting, you know, from birth. We are recruiting students from their birth. So you wonder why we are the largest college, in the, the fastest growing college, right? Yes, come here. Come here, yes. Yeah, please take a picture with the, and when he graduates, I'll take a picture with him. And I tell him, remember, we, <laughs> yes. This is here. Take here, yeah. Come here. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, this one for. Uh, <laughs> In fact, that's what makes the Rio Grande Valley different, and our the focus on the families. You know, I mean, that's what. Let me move to, this This is the last part of the ceremony, by the way, and we talk about that our students won't be successful without their families, but by the way, our students won't be successful without the support we receive from our community. So today I want to recognize a member of our community. Many of you know him, Dr. Fred Farias, you know, he is, uh, he has been serving the McAllen area, the Rio Grande Valley for many years as an optometrist. He is the CEO of Vision 2020 in McAllen, and he has, he has been a, a nationwide recognized optometrist, by the way. He's a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry, the president of the Texas Optometry Association. You see that picture? 2015, 2017, he was named the optometrist of the year. The optometrist of the year by the National American Optometry Association. So somebody like him, he would be busy with his practice, but that, all that busy life didn't stop him from serving the community. He's part of the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. He's part of a very important program. You can search it online, Infant C. That's for, it's a public no cost program for eye care for infants of families who have no insurance, who have to provide them that, and he's leading that initiative. Part of the Arthritis Foundation and many other foundation. But also, that's not enough. He has been serving higher education. He, he is a graduate of UT Austin, so, and he has been recognized by UT Austin, Outstanding Alumni Award. He got his optometry degree from Southern College of Optometry, Lifetime Achievement Award. By the way, he was recognized by other universities, but, but one of the most important recognition that happened last year is by our university as the Medal of Honor given to him by this university for his service to, to higher education. Now, let me tell you how did he make a difference in the lives of those students. Actually, in 2015, 
Dr. Farias was appointed to the Texas Higher Coordinating Board. You know that all our programs has to go through the Texas Higher Education, and Dr. Sagan has to go through them for something coming soon. So you have to keep them happy, Dr. Sagan, okay? So in 2021, he became the chair of the board, of the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. In 2023, we submitted our first PhD proposal in engineering in the Rio Grande Valley. In 2024, we submitted the second one. By the way, we went to the coordinating board before for PhD degrees. We were said no. And let me remind you, I don't know if you know that, Fred, or not. When we went to get our engineering, undergraduate engineering degree in the 90s, the people on the Texas Higher Education Board, they say, can the kids in the Rio Grande Valley do engineering? They may not do it. They question that. Think about how did that turn 180 degrees. When we presented that proposal, me and Dr. Lozano in 2013, me and Dr. Tumai in 2024, Dr. Farias stood up to advocate for our students. He told the board that our students de deserve the same opportunity that the students in Austin and San Antonio. He told the board that the students of the Rio Grande Valley is as smart, if not smarter, you've seen all these national awards, than any other students. He told the board that I believe in UTRGV and I believe in the students of UTRGV. That's what he did, Dr. Farias. And this year, since I came to the college, you know, I like giving awards and doing parties and all these things. <laughs> I started the Dean's Medallion, you know. I wanted to give somebody a medallion. I've been doing that every year. Someone who made the difference. Someone who made a difference in the lives of our students. Someone who make a profound impact on our university. Someone I want our students to look up for as a role model. Say, when we, I, we want to do like him. We want to become servant leaders like him. Someone who gave opportunities to all these students. And this year, no one deserved this medallion. I know he received the President's medallion, but nobody is than Dr. Fred Farias. Please help me welcome him and give him a standing ovation. Come here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to accept more access. Yes. I forget that I'm supposed to give him the award, by the way. I got excited, I forget about it. You can hold it, yeah, before you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Can we do this up? Oh, of course. Yes, yes. See you. And Dr. Sagan, can you come with us and Samantha? Yeah. Yeah. Because Samantha represents Dr. Bailey and. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. yes. And the microphone. Yeah. If you want to give the microphone. Yes, I'm good. I'm good. I'll put it here, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll ask you to set you up, sir. Yeah, you can, I'll, I'll put this one for you. Yes, yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bosch, and thank you for this, this great honor. And uh, for those of you that don't know me, I uh, grew up here. I'm a native of the Rio Grande Valley. I um, have a passion for higher education, obviously. Uh, and serving in higher education has always been a passion for me. Healthcare, obviously, being an eye doctor, but also higher education, because it is the key to everyone's success. And so I want to thank all the staff and the faculty uh, and everyone associated here, the industry folks that are here um, that have supported UTRGV, the engineering program. Um, the story you gave I was familiar with because a former president, before I became on the board in 2015, had given me the stories of how the, the professors and the president of the universities down here, here with UTRGV, before we merged with the UT system, had troubles, under, people understanding the value of programs like master's and PhD programs uh, for the Valley. Uh, and so now, you know, the Valley is not only the future of Texas, it is Texas. And for the students, let me tell you, I was a first generation student. Uh, I was fortunate to go off to school uh, where I did, but I also took classes here. A lot of people don't know that in the summer. When I'd come home and work in the summer, I took classes, chemistry and biology classes here in the summer at Pan American University. So I also have a great uh, debt of gratitude for my education being part of, of this university as well. Uh, but more importantly to the students, 
I encourage you to work hard. And so when these proposals come forward, um, and I, I have colleagues all over the state, and I travel and visit with all the Board of Regents, uh, the position of the Higher Education Board not only is to approve programs like this, but we oversee the $3.2 billion student loan program in the state. Um, we oversee a lot of areas like the formula funding for the universities um, that we recommend to the Legislative Budget Board, to the legislators and the senators to be able to finance uh, education. And our number one priority this year for legislation coming starting in uh, January of 2015 will be student scholarships because we're in charge of that and providing opportunities. But more importantly, the, the role of what you do as a faculty, as a staff, uh, Dr. Bailey, we, we were really blessed. I was just with the Texas Tech Board of Regents. He was a past president there, and they keep asking me, Dr. Farias, how did y'all get Dr. Bailey down there? You know, and, and we have great leadership throughout the UT system. I serve on the University of Texas System Chancellor's Executive Committee. And let me tell you, I get asked about UTRGB all the time. And I'm very proud of the students. And I think we deserve these programs and the students, the, the data that we're seeing. Congratulations on when I tell people the engineering program is number one program uh, with the students here at UTRGV and that the students are doing well and that we have a lot of women in the STEMs. People are not surprised, especially when they know the industry like SpaceX and all these opportunities that the Dean shares with me where our graduates are going to Boeing and, and great companies. But everyone here work hard as students because you have great opportunities and then hopefully some of you will come back home, but more importantly, give back to the university, UTRGV, because it's providing everyone an opportunity. And again, the community, the businesses, the people that are here for that, thank you for supporting UTRGV, the engineering department, because it really makes a difference in our community here in the Valley. And it's all about economic growth and helping everyone do better in their lives, to be able to get back to the Texas economy and provide better opportunities for everybody down the line. People always ask me, why are you on these boards and all? I, I was telling the dean, I just got appointed, and I couldn't turn it down. I got appointed starting this fall to the MD Anderson Cancer Center Board in Houston. And I mean, that to have somebody from the Valley on that, I mean, it's just tremendous. So that's one opportunity I couldn't pass up because of the fact that it, it, it's, it's health is such a big issue for our whole state, but cancer, and what UTRGV is doing with our medical school as well in collaboration with engineering, the medical department. What I love about UTRGV is interdisciplinary and people can take different elective courses. But go out there, work hard, make great grades, and give back to your community. And thank you very much for this thank honor. You. One more. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. By the way, this is the last slide, good news, just one more minute. By the way, the slogan for our college is successful together. When I came to the college, I created. So if you look into these pictures, you see many of the people you've seen, and you've seen the tremendous successes of our college, of our university, of our students. And this represents what successful together means. Successful together means we are successful because of our students like Indy, like Claudia, because of our graduates like Dana, like Dulcie, like uh, Jesus, because of the parents of our graduates, like the Capitanacci family, like Mom Dulcie, because of our faculty, because of our staff, and because of our community member like Dr. Farias. We are successful because we are working together. And we are successful because of each and every one of you. So let's continue to work together. Let's continue to be successful together. And thank you for joining our college. The next year will be even better. Thank you all. Woo! Appreciate it.